Hey guys, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to have a quick overview of the differences and similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, this, this is just going to kind of kick this uh, playlist off, kind of get a, a jump start on what the difference is, what we can expect to see um, in class and in lab when we're talking about the differences and similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, um, shouldn't take that long, should be a pretty simple um, and pretty uh, self explanatory video, but uh, for the purposes of this uh, topic, we're going to jump it off with a simple table that kind of outlines some really basic similarities and differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And we're going to kind of dive into these cells and look at kind of a, a more in-depth view in, in later videos. But um, when we compare just at the surface level the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we have to we have to start with... Um, kind of the nuclear region and the nucleus because that's really what differentiates these cells uh, from each other. So if we dive in to a eukaryote first, you will see that in true eukaryotes, which by the way, eukaryote as a word, prefix means true, eu means true, and karyote means kind of kernel uh, in Greek, and so that uh, loosely translates to true nucleus. So eukaryotes are cells that possess a true nucleus uh, in these cells, not only do they have a nucleus, which actually is surrounded by a nuclear membrane or a nuclear envelope that possesses two membranes and pores. So you'll see that within this nucleus, there are nuclear pores within the two membranes that make up the nucleus, which also make up the nuclear envelope. There is a core inside called the nucleolus, which is where all of these paired linear chromosomes res, uh, res, reside. Okay, so in a eukaryote, not only is there a nuclear envelope, which is two membranes thick, um, which is porous, which allows certain molecules to enter and exit, uh, which we'll talk about in later videos. There is a nucleus uh, or nucleolus, which is a densely packed kind of ball of DNA. Most of the time it's chromatin, um, but in eukaryotes there are paired linear chromosomes which also have histones present. Okay, Histones are proteins which help to coil and condense the DNA into chromatin. We'll talk about that later uh, in, in future videos as well. Inside of a eukaryote you will see all of these various um, endomembrane organelles or just membrane bound organelles. Again, we're going to have future videos on what exactly that means, but um, at this point in your biological career, you should know that, that eukaryotes possess mitochondria and ER, endoplasmic reticulum, both rough and smooth. They possess the Golgi apparatus, they possess lysosomes, vesicles, vacuoles, centrioles, um, all of these different things which are uh, membrane bound. Okay, prokaryotes don't have those. Eukaryotes also have a cell wall um, sometimes. Okay, plants, fungus, um, some uh, uh, single cell eukaryotes, okay, are going to have cell walls, but when they are present, they are always polysaccharide in nature. Plants are going to have the polysaccharide cellulose. Fungus um, and different mushrooms are going to have a cell wall, but they're going to be chitin. Um, but all of those, chitin or polysaccharide, is going to be uh, polysaccharide in nature, okay, or in disposition. And then eukaryotes or true eukaryotes are going to divide by mitosis. Um, meiosis is also a process that comes into play, but mitosis is the way that eukaryotes are going to divide when it is time for that particular cell to divide, okay? So to kind of wrap it up, eukaryotes have a nucleus. That nucleus has a nuclear membrane. That nuclear membrane is porous. The nucleus has a small core called the nucleolus where linear paired chromosomes are found. The DNA associated with a eukaryotic cell has histones present. Eukaryotes always have membrane-bound organelles and uh, therefore have true organelles. If there is a cell wall present, it is going to be polysaccharide in nature, and eukaryotes are going to divide by mitosis. If we contrast those things to the prokaryote, you'll see that every single one of those items, it is exactly opposite or, or different in the case of the prokaryote. And so 
prokaryotes, um, right off the bat, do not possess a nucleus, okay? So if we break down the word pro means pre or before, karyote, again, means kernel or nucleus. And so these are the types of cells that were believed to be around prior to the development of a eukaryote. They also show the more ancient um, anatomy. And so therefore, they're going to resemble the cells that were around prior to the development of the nucleus. In these cells, there is no nucleus, so you will not see any kind of membrane-bound nucleus. You won't see any of that nuclear envelope. Um, these guys have what is called a nucleoid region. It is a region much like a nucleus. Okay, The DNA is found in this region, but there is no membrane around it, so it is not a true nucleus. Um, the, the DNA associated with prokaryotes is not linear and is not paired. Okay, The DNA is circular and it is a single chromosome, okay? So there is a single circular chromosome. Sometimes you will actually see um, plasmids, which are small kind of accessory rings of DNA um, that are found in prokaryotes. That too is DNA, um, and it is not found in eukaryotes. Um, unlike eukaryotes, there are no histone proteins present in prokaryotic DNA. We give the term naked DNA to prokaryotes because they, they don't have DNA associated with these histones. They have DNA that is literally just the, new, you know, the nitrogenous bases, um, the single strand, it is a circle or a ring, um, no histones, no supercoiling, no, um, no nucleosomes, those, those types of structures that are always associated with eukaryotic cells. Um, unlike eukaryotes as well, there are no organelles. You'll see that all the way throughout this cytosol or through the cytoplasm, there are no endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, none of those organelles that you always you know, typically see with eukaryotes. They are not going to be found in a prokaryote. And um, bacteria and archaea, which are both prokaryotes, okay, are going to have a cell wall. You can see that in this kind of teal color. There is a cell wall, um, I guess the teal color in this case is a capsule, which is on the outside of the cell wall, but there is a cell wall on the inside of that capsule on the outside of the membrane. Okay, The cell wall in a prokaryote is either peptidoglycan, which is found in true bacteria, and pseudomerin, okay, um, which is um, sometimes called pseudomerin. Um, but the sonomerin is going to be the cell wall composition or what the cell wall will be composed of in the case of archaea. Now, there are some differences be between bacteria and archaea that we're going to go into in uh, future videos. But for the purposes of this overview video, bacteria and archaea can both be seen as prokaryote. There is some differences, obviously, in their cell wall composition and also in the kind of internal anatomy. But we're going to go into that later. Prokaryotes are going to divide by binary fission as well, you, while eukaryotes are going to divide by mitosis. Okay? Now, why is there a difference in the way that they divide? Most of the, you know, the difference in the way they divide comes into the, you know, whether there's a nucleus or not. If there's a nucleus, then obviously you need to divide that nucleus before you divide the cell. Um, and so that's the biggest difference between mitosis and binary fission. Okay? Eukaryotes and uh, mitosis have to divide the nucleus first. Prokaryotes, because they lack a nucleus, don't have to divide the nucleus first. They can just kind of replicate that, chromo that chromosome and then split themselves in half. So that's it for the overview video. We're going to dive a lot deeper into the anatomy and the composition of both eukaryotes and prokaryotes over the course of the next several videos. Okay, um, But um, for now, this gives us kind of a jump start on the, on the topic. So um, if you have questions, bring those to class. I will see you later.